Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays, and I actually got a couple requests for the BF109 Z or Z, depending on where you live. So, the BF109 Z. Yeah, what is Presla saying? Someone invited me to a party. Oh, okay. So, the BF109 Z Tier 7 German Heavy Fighter comes after the ME410, and this thing is a bit of a bear to handle mostly because you're getting four mark 108 30 millimeter cannons which are notoriously slow shell velocities you can actually watch them boo and they're very spread out there's one in each wing and then one in each hub but that's not really centrally mounted now is it uh we are trying to do bomber intercepts there is bomb squad on the enemy team over here and we do have the firepower to help out with that Sometimes the bombers will come over here and try and take our mining plant. So this really becomes who can stop the other one from getting the mining plant. Uh, we do have Prezalau on our team, another really good bomber pilot. So this will be an interesting situation to kind, kind of see who's bringing what to the fight. Oh, there's a human. This is too high, by the way. If you're ever doing this, you are way too high. But uh, we'll be happy to teach him a lesson here. He's barely moving. I might need to come back on him. Oh yeah, he is so high. 10,000, 11,000 feet? That is not a spot for a B-17 to be in. Way too high. We'll try to come back around on him, I guess. Alright. Well, I'm not worried about him, that's for sure. These guns operate more like a shotgun, if anything. So we're just trying to get as many rounds as we can towards the aircraft. Getting that lofty lead. Oh. Not quite this time. Got him. Nice. Woo! We're not turning with him. We're going to go up and over. We're going to angle down. Get some of that speed back. We'll hit the boost cooler as well. There we go. What is behind me? BF-109G. These are going to be the bane of your existence. As a heavy fighter, having a light fighter on your six like this, not fun. We're kind of taken out of the fight for a minute here. There isn't much I can do here, except maybe try and outclimb him. We're getting a little bit on him. Come on, that is not the way I expected the rudder to behave. Ah, is graphic a human? Yeah, it is. There's no way a bot would have done that. That's definitely a human way to do something. But he was completely out of the fight for an enduring period of time. Granted, he took me out of the fight too, but jeez. I don't know why you do that. Maybe name recognition. Who knows. Let's do what we originally intended to do. We're going to try and intercept a bomber. Where is he at? We're not getting a visual yet. I'm not worried about him. He's up so high. Key 88. Nah, none of those are human controlled. I don't see the B-32. Okay. We're actually going to slam on the brakes because this guy is essentially sitting still. We're going to hammer down on the trigger here. This will allow us to be able to get some of the capture back, but he's not dropping on much. There's a Key 88. We just did a video on this aircraft, actually. 
Ah, can't believe we didn't take him out on that run-in. There, we made up for it. These big, goofy guns. And they hit like a Mack truck when they're making contact. I have to come back on him. We are fairly maneuverable for a heavy. 14.4 seconds turn time for us. We're going up, trying to get up to that ME410. You can see we're still making acceleration in the climb. Give him a little old F5 here. Couple of good shots from the shotgun here. You think of these as a automatic shotgun, your life's gonna go a lot better. Man, what a, a good game, solid fight, except for getting a little bit distracted with that 109G trying to chase us down up not the stratosphere. I think we had a good amount of teamwork going on. Uh, this kind of goes back to the F2G video, actually. This is that whole idea that I'm seeing a lot of players on lately, and I see them creeping up in the tiers as well, which shows that this population that's joining us is continuing to advance and isn't just sitting in the tier five, tier six realm playing as casuals, but they're they're actually legitimately grinding through the game and trying to build up their crews and build up their progression down certain lines. So did we do stellar? I'd say that this is a respectable match. Anytime I break 10K, I call it a respectable match. Heck, an 8,000 matches is a respectable match as well. Uh, we are not favoring accuracy with this aircraft. We already know the accuracy is out the window. What I've gone for is spam. By putting on the bull carrier, the reinforced bull carrier, it allows us to be able to throw out even more shells before the guns start to overheat, keeping essentially that choke on the shotgun like we've talked about before. We want to keep those rounds clustered up. And you're just unloading into the sky now let's take a look and see how well did we even do when it comes to damage we managed to cause 6270 damage against eight different aircraft and of those eight aircraft we killed two bombers two heavies two ground attackers and a multi-role and, and a light fighter this is what i expect to see i expect to see a majority of your kills being bombers attack aircraft heavies you don't want to do a lot of excessive turns in a heavy aircraft uh, when it comes to this thing uh, it has a slight edge on the hornet and the f7f when it comes to the maneuverability but that's mostly in the roll you start to feel that when you're trying to do a little bit of a turning engagement you saw there was a couple of times when we were over the mining plant we were doing some um nose over turns by hitting that rudder uh, the altitude performance we've got both of these beat entirely uh, as you can see here it's almost like the americans all of a sudden become british heavies for this this aircraft and this aircraft alone i uh, looking at lower altitude regimes and you're also going to find the maneuverability drops uh, but this also has them beat for the airspeed as well, which is huge when you're talking about heavy fighters, and it also has them beat for its overall firepower. But bringing those guns to bear is fairly difficult. Uh, we went with the improved, or sorry, the reinforced bull carriers. The reason we went with the bull carriers is it allows you to be able to get more shots before the guns overheat, and it also keeps the guns cooler longer which prevents your, your shotgun spread from getting wider so it's a uh, vision putting a choke on your shotgun here and we're just firing away with buckshot and that is 
the way I envision this aircraft. Just envision like uh, if you're familiar with shotguns, the uh, Benelli shotgun is a semi-automatic shotgun. You can just pop, 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 fire those shots off. That's what this thing is. It's a semi-automatic shotgun. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Be careful when you're firing not to overheat the guns. Pull a bit of lead and let those bursts make contact with the enemy. Even if you're not going to kill them on the first pass, these things are 30 millimeter cannons. They're they're massive shells. Uh, it's almost like throwing like a, a bunch of softballs at a target. Even if you get one hit, there's a good chance you're going to be causing critical damage. So just be aware that you don't need to kill everything on the first pass. Cause it, cause it a bunch of pain, make its life difficult, and then use your superior speed and altitude performance to go ahead and get out of that engagement. Uh, I, I don't have much more to say about this aircraft. It's the guns that are going to become a problem uh, for a lot of the people that are starting out in this aircraft. And you'll be tempted to go, well, you know what? Uh, there's an option here for me to just keep the 20 millimeter cannons and I'm just going to do that and it'll be easier. Okay, fine, you can do that. But once you specialize in this aircraft, you're stuck with those guns. Or if you specialize in the very iconic 262, you can see specialization locks in the 30 millimeter cannons, and these are also Mark 108s. You're gonna lock in 30 millimeter cannons when you go to the HG3, and when you lock in the HG2 as well. So what favor are you doing yourself when you kind of lock yourself in essentially? to flying with the 20 millimeter cannons. I think it will be very beneficial to understand how these guns work early on. And then once you understand them and you've grown accustomed to the 30 millimeter cannons, they can be a very devastating force on the battlefield. So do you want to take the easy route or do you want to take the challenging but more rewarding route? Eh, it's up to you guys. Uh, I, I do think that there's some good debate out there, and if they ever change specialization that you can actually downgrade weapons if you want, uh, there's probably a good argument to be made for the consistency of those 20 millimeter cannons. But if you're going to fly your 109Z in the way that I just mentioned, going after heavies, going after bomber aircraft, I think you'll find that you'll want to have that heavy hitting punch of the 30 millimeter cannons. And you'll be glad that you did it by the time you get to this beauty at tier 10. So that way you can take advantage of varied shell velocities and big kind of unwieldy cannons. Uh, granted, these aren't Mark 108s, but they're going to have some overlaps in the characteristics and how they behave. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this is helpful to those of you that are struggling with the 109Z series. Uh, it is... It's a solid plane. I like it. It's no P82 Bravo for a dual hull, but it is definitely a very interesting platform. And once you learn to enjoy it, I actually found myself at the end of the grind. I distinctly remember at the end of the grind, I was like, oh, I'm glad to be getting a 262, but I think this aircraft prepared me for the 262. And that is definitely true, guys. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.